What's up everybody and today we're reacting to something pretty cool. It's Hinduism Explained. I know my regular viewers will be like, why are you reacting to this? Not long ago, when was it? It was on the 10th of November. So uh, about a couple of weeks ago, I reacted to um, how the universe was created according to Hinduism. And um, I surprisingly got a lot of love and comments on that video it was actually really heartwarming it, there's videos i make where i get a lot of like you know shit comments and people you know certain games or certain reactions people are just not very nice people but in that one it was surprisingly nice and the reason i reacted to it is because i have i have this deep underlining love for all things mythology whether that's mythology from where i'm from which is the british isles whether that's mythology from anywhere around the world whether it's the greek the roman the egyptians the native americans the chinese you know, and Hindu mythology was something that I've never really reacted to. And um, I picked up the Bhagavad Gita a while ago. And the reason I picked it up is because I was doing some studying on, um, you know, my beliefs, which I'm not going to get into on this video. Um, and there is definitely a lot of um, connections between that and, and other Eastern religions. So I wanted to learn some more about it. And um, as I've got older, I used to be a staunch atheist, and then as I got older, I, I kind of to get it, I tended to get a little bit more spiritual in a way, and uh, discovered that you know after having experiences like I, I you know, see you, you see me recording a, a thing that happened to me called my strange encounter on the seventeenth of October. I had a weird thing happen to me, and a few other things between um, you know between now and starting bus life a couple years ago. And a lot of weird things happened to me, a lot of spiritual experiences that I never really thought were a thing, right? I never really thought it was a thing. And so I've been diving deep into my own beliefs and my own um, pagan beliefs from, from, you know, Britain and around these areas. And what I found is the more I know about other people's religions, the more I can find connections with them people and build new bridges, right? So I not, might not be Hindu or I might not be a Christian or I might not be able to be any of these other different religions because they don't align with my beliefs. But through learning more about them, I'm able to connect in certain ways with these people. And I think that's an incredibly special thing and something that this world is definitely lacking these days is finding common ground rather than always alienating things because you don't know what they are. So today we're going to react to Hinduism Explained. Uh, we're going to learn a bit about this. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to have some fun. And if you've got any advice, let me know in the comments section. As always, there will be a link to the original video down in the description below. Down in the description, you will also see a link to my new project with my brother. It's called Dreadnought Meadery, where me and my brother are doing all things mead, whether that's reviewing, making, testing, learning history, all that stuff about mead is fantastic. Please go over, check that out. Dreadnought Meadery down below. Other than that, let's shut up. Let's pull this up. And let's learn, let's learn. Hinduism, the religion of over a billion people, is the world's oldest religion and probably the most confusing one to non-Hindus. So, I, I'm, I'm not going to pause it too much, but um, in the comments of the last video, I, I said in the video, you know, I learned that it's the oldest religion in the world and someone commented uh, a different religion. I forgot what it was. Um, oh, what was it? It was a different religion. Anyway, um, but someone corrected him by saying that even though the written record of Hinduism is 4,000 years old, obviously that's just the written record and therefore it should go back longer than that, you know, just through common logic. And therefore it's the oldest religion in the world, which I find incredibly fascinating. Some say it isn't even a religion, more a way of life. Hindus themselves call it the Sanatana Dharma, the eternal tradition. So what is Hinduism? Does YOLO apply to them? And who is this elephant guy? Well, let's find <laughs> out. Wait, I think I know the elephant guy. What's his name? He had his head cut off and it was replaced with an elephant. I know bits. I know bits. Begins with a G. Ganesh? I'm, I'm probably butchering. Whatever. We'll find out. We'll find out. Hinduism is the world's oldest active religion. It's okay. the result of the merging of the ancient Indus Valley civilization and the nomads that came into India around 1500 BC. Some scholars say it could even go back many more thousands of years. But yeah. we won't delve too deep into dates, because dates in Hinduism 
are fairly, very controversial. But one thing is certain. Hinduism is old. Oh, like, look at that building. That's stunning, isn't it? At least 36 Betty Whites. Hinduism <laughs> has been around for so long that it and the concept of India itself are inseparable. Yeah. Hindu and India even come from the same word. Sanskrit was the ancient language of the Hindus, and the Sanskrit name for the Indus River is Sindhu. The ancient Persians who sat across the Indus tended to switch their S's to H's, so Sindhu became Hindu. Oh. So the people living across the river became Hindus. The Persians told the Greeks, who dropped that very not Greek-like H, stuck in a very Greek-like E to the end, and boom, India. Hinduism has a- So India and, and Hindu have literally, well, the, the practically the same thing. That's incredible. What a, oh, I fucking love history, guys. I love history so much. A long, long history. But today we'll be focusing on just the core beliefs of Hindus because I don't have the willpower to animate a three hour long video. <laughs> Hindus are a diverse group. Some are strict, dedicating their lives to prayer, while others don't believe in any gods but still follow Hindu philosophy. Mm. To make things easier to understand, let's break Hinduism down into seven core beliefs. So just seven core beliefs, not a big deal. Let's just break it down to something simple. Oh, here's my rap about the seven Hindu beliefs. Oh no. I promised you weren't gonna do the rap. Come on, you're better than this, man. <laughs> Fine, here's the regular version then. One, belief in one universal soul. Hindus believe in a universal soul known as Brahman, mm. a formless, genderless source of all reality. Brahman is the universe and the material that makes up the universe. It's a trippy concept, but think of Brahman as an ocean and everything else as drops propelling out of that ocean. See, this is, this is exactly what I was saying at the start of this video, is there are aspects of Hinduism that are all over the world in other religions as well. I'm not gonna get into whether they've been taken from Hinduism or whatever, I just think that this is an important thing for us to do as a society is to find things that we all have common in common, right? Whether it's through your religions or even through athe atheism in general, I think it's a, a good way to be able to find common ground with people who do have religion and therefore you're able to come to good, meaningful philosophical debates. Does that make sense? And that's why I love learning about this stuff. Separate for a time, but still the same thing, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Two, belief in an immortal individual soul. In Hinduism, souls are known as Atman. Actions of the soul while in a body have effects on that soul's next life. Oh. When you die, your soul moves to another new body. This is called transmigration. The kind of body the soul inhabits next is determined by karma. Three, belief in karma. Karma is action usually good or bad actions that affect society. For Hindus, karmic actions in the past affect us today, and our actions today affect our soul's future. Four. I love the fact that he's got just a dude hitting someone else with a stick to prove karma. <laughs> Belief in moksha. moksha. The goal in Hindu life is to somehow get back to Brahman. If a Hindu can do this, they will be freed from the cycle of life and death. This mm. is called moksha. You can achieve moksha by realizing your oneness with Brahman. How you realize this is up to you. For this reason, Hindus pray, lead me from the unreal to the real. Five, belief in the Vedas. The Vedas are... Hin Aren't the Vedas like incredibly long? Isn't there like something like 14, 15 or 16 books or something? And the Bhagavad Gita is one small... I say small. It's one poem out of the Vedas. I'm pretty sure. Hindu sacred books of knowledge. There are four Vedas. Oh, Hindus there's only four? I thought there was like 16. What am I thinking of then? I might be thinking of something else. I'm sure someone will, someone will correct me in the comments. All four were divinely revealed to ancient Hindu sages. We'll take a closer look at the Vedas in a while. Mm. Six, belief in cyclical time. For Hindus, there are no beginnings or endings. Time is a series of cycles each cycle containing four ages or yugas. There's the Krita, the Treta, the Dwarapala, and the Kali. Added together, the four yugas total about 4.32 million years. So if, you want, if you're watching this and you're like me and you just want to know more about this religion, go and watch that last reaction I did because um, it gets into time and their concept of time um, 
in in a lot of mathematical detail and this is definitely a religion of mathematics to understand time in in uh, the hindu uh, religion you really have to have a good grasp of math i watched that video on the on the on the channel and then i kind of went back and i really off camera i went back and i really like slowed it down i was like okay and i was learning each step each step each step and it takes a bit of time and you know obviously for people who do study this religion who do follow this religion it would become incredibly important to them so um it seemed it might seem very simplistic here but it's not <laughs> at the end of each cycle declining human morality leads to the total destruction of reality mm. hindus believe that we are in the fourth and final yug kali Ooh. seven belief in dharma dharma is a difficult word to translate to english proper behavior is the best that i could come up with Dharma maintains balance in the universe. As long as mm. everything in the universe, like animals, plants, and humans, follow their Dharma, then everything will be fine. There's definitely not a lot of people following the Dharma these days, is there? If they break from the Dharma, though, things will be super not fine. Mm. Each sense. being has its own Dharma. A lion's Dharma is to kill and eat antelope. A king's Dharma is to rule well. A subscriber's dharma is to smash the like button and hey. ring the notification bell. For humans, their specific <laughs> dharma is usually based on their age and their caste. An old priest will have a very different dharma than a young merchant, for example. Yeah. So those are the seven core beliefs of Hinduism. With them, you can understand the Hindu mindset. Obviously, this is a very simplistic video, and each one of them core beliefs you could probably break down into a video that's hours and hours and hours long. Maybe even days and weeks long. <laughs> but um, the main beliefs, if you do put it as simple as that, is incredibly universal. Obviously using different language and different beliefs. But the, the Bobby basics of them core beliefs are also in other religions all over the world. And even some atheists. So I, I find that incredibly fascinating. Unlike Christianity or Islam, Hinduism is a non-profit organization. There is no Jesus or Muhammad for Hindus. There is no Bible, Quran, or Torah. Instead, mm. they have a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of different sacred texts. The four Vedas form the basis of the Hindu faith. So let's take a look at them. One, the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda is a collection of songs that praise and discuss ideas like truth, reality, and the universe. I'd love to read these. I really would. And I, like I said, I, I don't follow the Hindu, Hindu religion. I, I follow my own uh, pagan spiritual beliefs. I'd love to learn. I'd love to read these either way. Along with discussions on war, weddings, and rituals. Two, the Yajurveda. The Yajurveda covers stuff such as sacrificial rites and rituals. Three, the Sama Veda. Sama literally means sweet song that destroys sorrow. It is mostly songs dedicated to praising gods. It's different than the rest of the Vedas because it's set to music. Mm. Four, the Atharva Veda. The Atharva Veda is my favorite one. Do you want to curse your enemies? Or charm that special someone? Maybe learn to invoke rain? Or discover herbal medicine along with tips on warfare? What? Like how to make poison arrows? Well, this Veda has you covered. Along what? with a bunch of other charms and curses. It even has a curse against cursors. Avoid us, O oh curse. As a burning fire avoids a lake. Strike him here that curses us as the lightning of heaven, the tree. A link to the Atharveda is in the description, just in case you need a spell to get a wife or another to <laughs> banish pigeons from your presence. It's, it's great. After the Vedas come the Upanishads, which are like a sequel that makes the original make much more sense. They were probably written down between 800 BC and 500 BC, during a time when some Hindus started to question the Vedas. Their ideas became the Upanishads. The Upanishads are books on philosophy, like we would expect from Plato or Aristotle. They're the fact that they have philosophy, sorry, philosophy and mathematics and even some sciences um, directly as a core to their beliefs, I think is incredibly important. Um, I think any religion that doesn't incorporate any type of philosophy, although I feel like that's a, that's a, oxymoron isn't it really because all religions are a type of philosophy in a way aren't they but um having good debates and good um acknowledgements that at this certain time when they wrote these sequels they were questioning what they believed i think that's an important thing to always do is to 
question are you on the right path i think that's the best way to put it right and i do that all the time with with everything in life not just my my spirituality and stuff but in everything fitness or health or eating and family life everything you've always got to kind of make sure you're on the right path right um so when that's directly ingrained in their religion i think that's really impressive they're all about questioning doubt debate and finding the answers to life's difficult questions Brilliant. the theme in the upanishads is that people are not their minds or bodies or egos but their atman your soul is you everything else is unreal and temporary after the holy texts like the vedas and the upanishads are other less divine but still important texts these include stuff like the puranas the Bhagavad Gita, and the Ramaya, and the Mahabharata. The Puranas are like encyclopedias of Hindu beliefs. There are 18 well-known Puranas. The Puran this might have been where I was getting that number from there. Let's cover things from yoga to army organization. Which, by the way, yoga is so popular these days, even outside of the religion. I literally went to yoga last night, and it was absolutely fantastic. I do yoga on a regular basis these days. Um... And I think that yoga, honestly, is one of the best forms of exercise because you've got everything in there. You've got cardio, you've got body weight training, you've got breathing, you've got mindfulness. Um, and I think, you know, I, uh, it was a good like four or five years ago now, maybe even no, longer than that now. I think uh, Joe Rogan on one of his podcasts really pushed the idea of yoga and it really boosted it up in the type of people that don't really consider yoga something that they want to do. Especially like, you know, people who are more testosterone boosted, they're like, I don't want to do yoga. But I think people have started to come to the realization that it's actually incredibly beneficial for stretching and mobility and joint movement and everything. And that's why I've incorporated it in my exercises. It's not the only thing I do. Obviously, I love running. I love doing my kettlebell workouts. But yoga, man, it makes me feel different than them other exercises. To taxation, to the caste system, to hell, gods, and everything in between. The Bhagavad Gita, Gita for short, mm. is one of Hinduism's most important texts. The Gita takes place on a battlefield where Arjuna, a great warrior, refuses to fight. I don't want any spoilers, I'm about to read it. Don't give me anything. No, I already kind of know the concept of the book. <laughs> Lord Krishna steps in to urge Arjuna to fight, and their discussion covers things such as dharma and how to live your best life. Arjuna eventually fought after Lord Krishna taught him the truth about dharma. As a member of the warrior caste, Arjuna's dharma was to fight against evil. The lesson of the Gita is that everyone faces difficult choices, but they must act on them according to their dharma, no matter how unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Along with all these philosophical texts, Hinduism has two action-packed epics, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Ramaya, the earlier of the two texts, tells the story of Prince Rama. In the epic, you find out about his 14-year-long exile, the abduction of his wife Sita, his battle Holy. with the evil demon Ravana, and his awesome monkey sidekick Hanuman. Hanuman, I know about. I've heard, I've heard of Hanuman before. Um, inspired all sorts of different films all over the world. Hanuman. In fact, I, you wouldn't even believe this. I don't know where it is. Uh, it might be in my wife's room. I have a painting of Hanuman. Uh, me and my wife back in 2016 went to a yoga festival in vermont called wonderlust 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 is that what it was called anyway it was a big yoga festival and there was a musician slash yogi called mc yogi right very original and um not only was he doing incredible yoga classes they were absolutely amazing he on and his music's really good he was um selling these pictures and my wife bought one and it's a stunning picture I'd, I'd, I'd love to have it but it's probably hung up in my wife's room because she's more into um more into learning about that than i am or at least was back then because here i am right <laughs> the second epic the mahabharata is the longest poem in the world i've heard of this one quite a lot five times the length of the bible and eight times the length of the iliad and odyssey combined Holy shit. it rivals any soap opera you've ever seen when it comes to drama murder betrayal love love murder and giant battles the mahabharata what? has it all the theme running through the ramaya and the mahabharata is that dharma must be followed for society to function Whoa. In Hinduism, there are four goals a person should aim for to have a good life. The first of these is Dharma, 
followed by artha, the pursuit of prosperity and good reputation, kama, pleasure both in body and in mind, and moksha, the release from the cycles of rebirth. Mm. Hindus should practice artha and kama with dharma in order to achieve moksha. There are also uh, six okay. temptations Hindus should try and avoid. Kama, lust and materialism. This kama is different from the good kama mentioned above. I feel like that's something that we should all agree on these days is that materialism is something that we should all avoid. Myself included, everyone friggin' buys from Amazon because it's incredibly easy. But if you can get your books or anything from a local store supporting small businesses... Even if you have to pay an extra pound for it, and I know it's a struggle for everyone, it's worth doing it because we don't want to support, what's, what's it my wife called it? This fast fashion, where it's like fashion that's constantly being cycled out. We don't want to support that shit. It's not, it's not good for us. I know. Next is Kruda, which is anger. Loha, which is greed. Moha, which is unrealistic attachment to things, people, and power. Mada, which is pride and matsarya, which is jealousy. Mm. By following their dharma and avoiding these six temptations, a Hindu can break the cycle of rebirth and have their soul merge back into Brahman. But even though everything comes from Brahman, who is the one real thing in Hinduism, Hindus do, after all, have thousands of gods. So yeah. let's take a look at them. First, there's Brahma, the creator. He created everything in the universe, but he that's the one with a bunch of faces. I've seen that one before. He is not the universe itself, because that's Brahman. They aren't the same thing. That last letter changes a lot, apparently. He has four heads. The heads face each of the four directions to represent the four Vedas, which he created, and the four Yugas. He also mm. holds a book, which represents knowledge. Oh, and he <laughs> rides a giant swan, because he's... Knowledge. <laughs> I love that they put that meme in there. Just fancy. His consort is Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Vishnu, the preserver, is the second member of the Hindu trinity. He preserves the world created by Brahma until it is eventually destroyed by Shiva. Mm. He holds a discus, which he uses to cut down anyone that tries to mess with his dharma, along with a conch, which symbolizes victory and the five elements. Vishnu has many, many avatars, such as Krishna or Rama, who he uses to defend dharma on earth. Whoa. Oh, and he rides a giant eagle named Garuda. Vishnu has two consorts, the goddess Lakshmi and Budevi. Budevi is the earth goddess and Lakshmi is the goddess of good fortune and wealth. Interesting. Next is Shiva, the destroyer. There's so many gods. So many. Destroyer, the third member of the Hindu trinity. It's his job to destroy the universe in order to prepare for its renewal at the end of each cycle of time. Okay. The most identifiable of his features is his third eye which he almost always keeps closed. If he does open it and you're in front of him, then you will have your face melted off. <laughs> when not on making existence, Shiva enjoys long walks with his bull named Nandi. <laughs> At the end of the Kali Yuga, the fourth age of the world, Shiva will perform a dance that destroys the universe. Which is Imagine dancing while the universe gets destroyed. Don't be there's like them TikTokers that are just like doing dances while things are horrible things are going on in the background <laughs> odd because people have told me that my dance moves make them wish the world would end so me and shiva have quite a lot in common paravati <laughs> and sati are shiva's consorts shiva also has two sons ganesha and murugan ganesha i got it close i got it close i thought it was ganesh but it's ganesha okay ganesha is the worship as the remover of obstacles and murugan is the god of war Ganesha yes. holds a very special place in the heart of Hindus, due to him being the remover of obstacles. Mm. The elephant head is the most obvious clue to identifying him. He was actually born with a human head, but after Shiva cut that one off, he kind of had to make do with an elephant one. It's, not very, it's not very nice, is it? Cut off his head. Or Muslim, you're aware that your religion has a bunch of different denominations, yeah. like Catholics or Protestants, Sunni and Shia. Hinduism has these too. Hindus developed four major denominations, oh, okay. some of which have their own subdivisions. The Vaishnavas primarily worship Vishnu and Shaivas primarily worship Shiva and his Whoa, sons. Okay. Smartas follow sacred texts like the Puranas, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata rather than the Vedas. They worship five gods and goddesses, Ganesha, Durga, Surya, Shiva and a preferred avatar of Vishnu. Finally, Shaktas worship the goddess Devi. 
Shakta see Devi as the ultimate and eternal reality, like a feminine Brahman. Even though there are all these variations and more. Holy! It's so complicated, isn't it? More, the core beliefs of Hindus remain mostly the same. Hindus believe that Dharma keeps the balance in the universe. If the scales between good and evil start tipping towards evil, then something needs to intervene to fix the universe's dharma. Mm. This divine intervention is known as an avatar. Ah. The literal meaning of the word avatar is descent. Avatars are gods that descend to earth to intervene whenever help is needed to restore dharma. That's For example, cool. when the earth was dragged underneath the ocean, Vishnu descended to earth as the avatar Varaha, a boar. Isn't it weird that all religions pretty much have like some sort of ancient flood mythology? Weird. ...and drag the earth back out. In other cases, Vishnu was born on earth as a human avatar like Rama or Krishna, where he spent his avatar's life fixing Dharma. So, mm. the caste system. If you only know one thing about Hinduism, this is probably it. People see it as an oppressive system that locks people in place based on their birth. And for a huge part of history, that's what it's been, unfortunately. Let's do a quick explanation of what the caste system is. In Hinduism, there are four castes or classes that you can be born into. There's the Brahmin, the priest, the Kshatriyas, the warriors, the Vishas, the traders, and the Shudras, the manual laborers. Oh. The main basis for the caste system can be found in the Bhagavad Gita and the Rig Veda. Krishna says in the Gita, I have created a fourfold system in order to distinguish among one's qualities and functions. So it is a that is kind of a strange way of putting it, isn't it? Like you you are meant to be in one of the things. I'm I'm a big believer that um you know people believe that there's that one that one was it ikigai ikigai i've got the book on it which is a japanese thing about finding your ikigai about finding your purpose in life and i believe that there are things that people um enjoy but the mixture of ikigai in J japanese philosophy is something that benefits the community that you enjoy that makes you uh money and uh there's another one as well i can't remember the other one is Anyway, it's the intersection of all that. And I am a big believer that that is a thing. But I'm also a big believer that people's interests change all the time. Look at me. I was in the Royal Marines Commandos. I don't recommend going in the military anymore. And I'm against war. And now I'm reacting to stuff like this. I think that people change. And I think that that's okay as well. So on that one, I'm a little bit on. I'm not too sure. But if you're going with what he says, where it's following your dharma then surely if your interests change and you follow that, then that's also correct as well. Let me know in the comments. The Rig Veda also refers to the four castes. It says humans were created from parts of the god Purusha, the Brahman from his face, the Kshatriya from his arms, the Vaisha his thighs, and the Shudra his feet. Whoa. This system was supposed to assign people functions based on their abilities, not their birth. Oh. If someone had the qualities of a Brahman, or a Vaisha, they could fill those roles. The Gita didn't restrict movement among castes, and the caste system functioned as intended for a while. Oh, so it, it says you can move between things. There you go. That makes sense then. Until a document known as the Laws of Manu came about around the 5th century BC, mm. popularly referred to as the Manu Shmirti. They created hard rules for Hindu life. Two rules presented in it contributed to the way the caste system turned out. Manu states that the Brahman were the lords of all castes, and mm. he forbid moving among the castes. The caste you were born into was now the caste you're stuck in. Yeah, if nah. Nah. Don't, I don't... I don't. I, at the end of the day, um, I went into the military, right? That might not be my thing to do, but I did. I enjoyed it. Now I don't enjoy it, and I'm a big believer in moving between interests. Give humans a hierarchy, they'll exploit it, and things will go sour pretty quickly. Yeah, that's As time though. passed, Hindus began thinking in terms of upper and lower castes. Soon, cleaning toilets, tanning leather, and dealing with meat products were thought to be impure. The people doing those jobs became untouchables. The lowest of the low, a people without caste. And the Aww. rest is history.
The modern world has brought many changes though. Now Hindus mix freely while working together in the same businesses, attending the same schools and generally just living together. But when it comes to marriage, many Hindus still stick to their own caste. But this too is changing and on Hindu dating websites you can actually see people list a non-preference for caste. It'll Weird, that's really interesting. It'll say caste no bar. So those are the basics of Hinduism. It isn't even close to covering everything. One video simply can't do it. Hinduism is too diverse, too deep and means too many different things to different people. But yeah. learning even the basics of this fascinating and ancient religion gives us an insight into the worldview of over a billion people. Yeah. And I hope you enjoyed it. You can find all the sources used in the description. He's got a little Lord of the Rings book in the bottom shelf on the left. It's underneath the bar now. It's right here. A little Lord of the Rings book. Spotted that. Any other good books there? Mm. No, I don't see any Hello. other. If you would like to follow your correct dharma, then please subscribe. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are links to my t-shirt store and Patreon also in the description. All right, there'll be a link down below to the original video. Go and check that out. Interesting. I actually learned a lot there. Um, I feel like I want to do a little bit more reading into the religion um, and see how it can um, impact my own spiritual beliefs. Um, if you've got other mythologies, other religions, other philosophies that you want me to react to, let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll certainly do that. There'll be a link down below to the original video. There'll also be a link down below to the new project me and my brother are working on, which is Dreadnought Media. Please go and check that out. Other than that, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.